How's it going guys? Today we're going to talk about the homolamina camouflage and their care. I'm also going to give this plant a score of either easy, intermediate or hard based on how easy or hard this plant possibly is to care for. So the homolamina camouflage is a tropical plant native to Central America and Southeast Asia. These are a kind of understory sort of a plant so they're going to be growing in more shaded areas with just indirect light or dappled light. They're also going to be growing in fairly high humidity, high moisture sort of environments as well. These aren't an overly large plant either. They average around 30 to 50 centimeters tall depending on how they're looked after. Generally planted outside in the right conditions, they can reach up to 50 or even 60 centimeters tall. In a pot in your home for the most part, they're more around the 30 to 45 centimeters tall. This one is probably honestly only just pushing 30 centimeters tall. So they're not a massive plant. So if you want something that's on the smaller side of things, these could potentially be a good option for you. Now, I guess one of the things that attracts people to this plant is the colored leaves, the very variegated camo sort of style patterning on these leaves, hence the name Homolamina camouflage. They're an absolutely beautiful looking plant, but does that mean they're easy to care for? Well, first thing you need to take into consideration is yes, they are variegated. So that does kind of tell you a little something about the sort of lighting these guys need. While they don't like direct sun, they can't handle direct sun by any means, they like bright indirect light. Medium indirect light, they can kind of push through, but you will find they're not going to produce fairly large leaves when they're in indirect light. So provide them with bright indirect light if possible and avoid full sun. So ideally you want to place this near a window that doesn't get full sun for any length of time, or maybe just place it a bit further back from a window so it just gets the indirect light from a sunny window. Or if a window is not an option for you, you can just invest in some grow lights. They'll do perfectly fine under those too. Now being a tropical plant, they do like a higher level of humidity. So if you live in a climate where the humidity gets kind of low, especially maybe during winter time, these might be a problematic plant for you. Um, I have found they do tend to get crispy edges to their leaves during winter, especially if the humidity gets low. You wanna to try to keep them at about 60% humidity or higher if possible. Now, again, this can vary depending where you live. So uh, if you're not in a tropical climate, you might wanna also invest in a humidifier or possibly if you have other house plants, clump it up with those and then they kind of sh share each other's humidity that they create with the water that evaporates from their leaves. Uh, otherwise, you can possibly put it on a pebble tray with some water um, or just mist it as regular as you can. The watering for these plants is about as um, demanding as their humidity levels. These are a fairly thirsty type of plant and they cannot tolerate dry soil for any length of time. Usually the second their soil is dry, the plant will immediately start to wilt. You water it, it bounces back up again. So on the one side of things, it does let you know it needs watering, but this does mean you can't neglect this plant for very long. They like things wet most of the time, but that's also a dangerous combination for root rot if your soil mix is incorrect. So I would definitely try to avoid having an overly compact, muddy type of soil with this. You wanna definitely mix some perlite or pumice through your soil mix so there is decent drainage because you're gonna be watering this plant quite a lot. And there's not gonna be a massive period of time between watering where the soil is dry because this plant cannot tolerate dry soil for that long. Um, on top of just wilting all the time when it gets dry, if this is happening too regular and you're letting it completely wilt and letting the soil dry out too often, you'll find again, it'll start to get very crispy looking leaves. The new leaves it pushes up will get increasingly smaller and smaller. So you just end up with a very unhealthy looking plant in time if you kind of are very um, forgetful with watering these plants. It like, look, it's gonna be a little different for all of you because we all live in different places in the world, with different climates and everything. Um, but I've generally found during the warmer times of the year for me, um, so like in summer and spring mainly, I'm watering this homolamina maybe two to sometimes even three times a week. Um, where in winter I maybe water it one to two times a week. And again, this does vary on um, my individual temperatures in my home compared to maybe yours. Uh, and also your soil mix and the size of the pot plays a role too in this. Like I was saying, you don't want the soil to be too like compact and muddy uh, with no decent drainage because it's going to retain the same water for too long. You're potentially risking root rot. On the other end of the spectrum, if the drainage is too high and water is running straight through and it's not retaining anything, the plant's not going to benefit much from that either and you're going to be watering this thing constantly. 
So you want to find that nice mix of soil and perlite. I generally only mix about maybe 5% to 10% perlite to whatever amount of soil I'm using. Um, that provides enough drainage, but there's still more, but there's still enough soil to hold enough water for a few days before I need to water again. The size of the pot that this plant's in will also play a role in this because a bigger pot with more soil uh, is going to hang on to more moisture, but you don't want to go too big. Like I always say with my plant videos, if you guys have watched any of my previous ones, I always say repot your plant one pot size up each time. Go from a five inch to a six and a six inch to a seven, generally every one to two years. And that's the same rule for this plant. What I'm basically referring to when I talk about the pot size is you wanna make sure you do repot this plant when it needs it. You don't wanna let it stay in a small pot for too long. Like, look, I've talked about plants in the past. Certain ones don't mind being compact in a pot and if anything, do a little better. Um, like for example, ZZ plants and snake plants, even various alocasia species, don't mind being compact in a small pot and I would argue sometimes they do a little better. But with this one, you do not want to let it get to the point where it is root bound in a small pot, where it's all roots and hardly any soil left in the pot because you've got zero water retention there. And you're going to be just wasting water draining it through the pot and out the bottom fairly quickly and the plant's not even going to get much of that. So I would definitely try to repot this every one to two years and go up one pot size each time with, like I said, a soil mix of about 5% or so of perlite for every for the amount of soil you're using. Next thing is fertilizing. It's pretty much the same as most house plants with that, honestly. Generally, you want to fertilize during the growing seasons of spring and autumn. I'll often fertilize kind of mid-spring and then I'll fertilize again around mid-autumn what fertilizer to use is completely up to you. There are quite a few out there on the market and I've not used enough of them to tell you what the best one honestly is. Just a general indoor plant fertilizer is fine, whether that be a seaweed or a fish emulsion one. Um, you can use the liquid based ones that you just kind of mix with water and water your plants. You can also use a pelletized fertilizer that you just kind of Sprinkle a bit on the top of the uh, soil in the pot and as you water the plant, it slowly dissolves into the soil. Propagating this plant isn't exactly as simple as taking a cutting. It's very similar to propagating a spathophyllum, honestly. If anyone's ever done that before, you have to split the plant. So firstly, you want your homolamina to be a decent size. You're generally going to start off with um, a single plant, especially if you're getting a small homolamina. It's most likely going to be just one singular, I guess, mother plant. As it gets bigger, it sprouts off kind of little plantlets out the side of the pot. This one here, if I turn around this way, I could, there's at least two plants here just kind of very close together. So if I wanted to, I could split those. You do this when you're doing your repotting. So once you've taken this out of the pot, you clean some of the soil off the roots just so you have access to the roots and you just gently part the two plants. As long as each one has a decent amount of roots attached to them, you can pot them up separately and there you go, you've got two homolaminas. So I guess propagating it isn't as simple as just taking a cutting, but it's not the hardest thing to do. You just got to wait until you're doing your repotting and your homolamina has to be a reasonable size for this to work. We'll also mention this homolamina and all homolaminas, mind you, are toxic to people and pets. So if you do have pets that like to nibble on your plants, maybe get a different type of plant or keep this out of reach. The last thing people who keep indoor plants generally have to worry about is pests. Now, homolaminas, as far as I've experienced, aren't that prone to pests, at least keeping them indoors. I haven't personally kept them outdoors, so I can't speak on that. But I've got, other than this uh, homolamina camouflage, I've also got homolamina rubicense, I have a couple of those. I have never had pests on them. Um, so they're not something you really need to worry about. Generally, unless you really let your homolamina go downhill, then it might get pests because I found weaker plants tend to be more prone to pests if they're like not doing as well and they're in the wrong conditions or whatever. But generally I've found homolaminas to not really be that problematic for pests. If you are concerned, I, I, I like to use a spray called white oil. So it's a petroleum jelly spray. You just give the underside and the top side of the leaves a light spray. It gives about two months or so of protection from all indoor pests. It works quite well. So if you are concerned, you can spray it with that. But honestly, I've never really found these to be a plant that gets pests at all. So they definitely win some points on the pest department. So while the homolamina camouflage 
isn't too demanding on the lighting it receives, provided it's not direct sun for any length of time. It's not too hard to propagate, provided you're happy to do it while you're repotting this plant. And the fact that it's not that prone to pests would normally make it a very easy houseplant. However, I do have to remove a few points for this plant purely because of its kind of finicky watering schedule and its intolerance to low humidity, especially in winter. Like I said, varies depending where you live in the world, but for the most part, on that department at least with the humidity and watering, it can be a little bit more demanding and finicky. So I'm gonna give this plant a ranking between easy and intermediate. Most people can keep this plant if you have a basic understanding of house plants. However, this isn't the sort of plant you can just sit in your corner, water it once a week or whenever you remember, and it's gonna do okay. This is something that does require a little bit more regular attention regarding watering and humidity. Rightio, so that's my video on the Homolamina camouflage. I hope this video was helpful to anyone who is considering one of these beautiful plants to have in their home. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. My buy me a coffee is down in the description. Should you want to donate to the channel, that would be much appreciated. Until then guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.